Water rationing usually occurs in the heat of summer, but Oklahoma's ongoing drought has entered its third year and is forcing Oklahoma City, Norman, and several more cities to begin rationing water in the dead of winter. Water issues are pitting Indian tribes against the state, large cities against small towns, and urban centers against rural areas as the competition intensifies for dwindling supplies. The, the whole state's in a, in a severe drought, exceptional. You can see the drought's impact in lakes and reservoirs across Oklahoma. Boats sit on the muddy bottom of Lake Hefner, a primary source of drinking water for Oklahoma City. Lake Stanley Draper in South Oklahoma City is more than 17 feet below capacity, and Lake Overholzer has dropped by about seven feet. Lake Thunderbird supplies water to the cities of Norman, Midwest City, and Dell City, and it's down more than seven feet Randy Warden is general manager of the Central Oklahoma Master Conservancy District, which oversees Thunderbird. Currently, our projections with uh, intensified drought would be that, you know, the lake could possibly go dry if we don't implement conservation measures now. Drought conditions ranging from severe to exceptional are affecting the entire state shrinking lakes that Oklahomans rely on for drinking water, agriculture, and recreation. Water issues have ignited a series of legal battles in recent years, including a lawsuit filed by the Chickasaw and Choctaw tribes seeking to block Oklahoma City from taking water from Sardis Lake in southeast Oklahoma. Water wars are also pitting state against state. The U.S. Supreme Court earlier this month agreed to hear arguments in a case brought by Texas officials who want to buy water from southeast Oklahoma. Now another fight may be brewing over Canton Lake in western Oklahoma. The drought has taken a toll on the lake. In 2011, lake levels had already started to fall. Two water releases since that time have dropped the lake even further today. Now, Oklahoma City is planning to draw 30,000 acre feet of water from the lake, which would drop lake levels an additional seven and a half feet. Canton Lake Association President Chef Converse believes that will have a devastating economic effect on the area. There's convenience stores, there's grocery store, the restaurants, the bait shops around the lake will be hit very hard uh, because recreational activity at the lake at that point will probably be close to zero. Others are raising environmental concerns. John Stahl is a regional fishery supervisor with the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation. Stahl says taking that much water from the lake will have a major impact on the lake's ecology. The lake's going to be so shallow that the wind, and as you know it's windy today, the wind is going to sweep the lake creating waves which is going to pull up the organic nutrients from the bottom, bring it up to the sunlight and heat, there's a chemical reaction, and we're going to have a big plankton bloom. Stahl says he's 97% certain that will result in a massive fish kill and fears the damage will be long-lasting. If this lake dies, it will take a minimum, and I do mean minimum, of five years to reconstruct the fisheries once water comes in here. Members of the Canton Lake Association met with Oklahoma City officials this week to discuss their concerns. That meeting drew the attention of State Representative Mike Sanders, who represents the area around Canton Lake. The problem that I have is, over the last three years, approximately, we've been in a drought. Why hasn't Oklahoma City conserved more water? Why haven't they uh, put those measures into place? This didn't happen overnight. Uh, so again, uh, it's almost like the big kid uh, is picking on the little short guy. Uh, and that little short guy is western Oklahoma. Despite those concerns, Oklahoma City is moving ahead with the release of water from Canton Lake. Utilities Director Marcia Slaughter says they will delay it as long as possible. And if we capture some great rain uh, in February, early February, we'd be happy to put off the release. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. The forecast for our state, uh, particularly for the western region, including Oklahoma City, is less rainfall than normal through about the 1st of June. Slaughter says the city is also moving ahead with measures to conserve water. Mandatory controls are going in today. We'll be visiting with Oklahoma City Water Utilities Trust in early February about other options to assist with the, the ongoing drought. While Oklahoma City is taking water from Canton Lake, it may soon be selling water to other parts of the state. 
Earlier this month, President Obama signed legislation clearing the way for the Central Oklahoma Master Conservancy District to purchase water from Lake Atoka in southeast Oklahoma. Norman Mayor Cindy Rosenthal says that would help stabilize lake levels while the drought continues. The OMCD will enter into negotiations with the city of Oklahoma City to secure uh, some right to water that then, probably in the near term from the Atoka pipeline, uh, that then would go right into Lake Thunderbird. The Atoka pipeline that carries water from Lake Atoka to Lake Draper runs along the eastern and northern boundaries of Lake Thunderbird. That pipeline is also part of the lawsuit filed by the Chickasaw and Choctaw tribes, but tribal officials have given assurances they will not block a move to tap the pipeline. Still, it's left a sour taste in the mouths of Canton area residents. We do feel that we are being sacrificed in order for Norman to have water in, in a way, or any other surrounding community, that, hey, uh, we out in western Oklahoma can be taken advantage of for the gain of those in and around the metro area. Members of the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes also have an interest in what happens to Canton Lake. Tribal legislator Rupert Nallen says the next step will be to ask the U.S. Corps of Engineers to order a delay in any release of water from the lake. Uh, Oklahoma City admitted in this meeting that they have 20,000 acres feet in Lake Hefner that they can utilize. Uh, that, that would give them enough water to probably last until April. Ann Nallen isn't ruling out the possibility of legal action. The tribes have 2,000 acres adjacent to the lake. They have like probably three quarter miles shoreline on the lake. Uh, these are properties and th those properties, we have property rights adjacent to them, including the water rights to the whales. There are questions about whether releasing water from Canton Lake would provide significant benefits to Lake Hefner. Oklahoma City officials concede at least half the water from the lake will evaporate or be absorbed by the North Canadian River before it ever reaches Oklahoma City.